my light brighter oh, again. Oh, nice, I put yeah. B b b b batteries in. It's no longer like a dying planet. Like <laughs> You've just enacted the entire plot of the movie Sunshine by yourself in your room. Did I really? Just like I new think batteries. that's what Sunshine's about. Or a planet. <laughs> Or maybe I'm thinking of the episode of Courage the Cowardly Dog where they go have to, they have to go screw a new light bulb into the sun. Oh, <laughs> that's great. One of those. <laughs> Good stuff. Melissa, how are you? I'm doing fine. It's, it's a bright day outside. It's mild weather. I can wear a yeah. dress without leggings underneath. And I prize oh, okay. that. Good stuff. Good stuff. It's uh, it's pretty chilly here where I am, but it's still yeah, bright and sunny. It feels good. It feels nice. It's a good, it's a good weekend. Uh, mm. I barely made it here to the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> what were your obstacles? I, uh, the the obstacles was a lot of alcohol. <laughs> uh, I so it was my birthday yesterday. Uh. So hi, yes, hey, Hooray! happy birthday to me. Um, and I, we were planning on doing the podcast last mm. night, just but like I, I don't really have much planned. I'll just spend it here on the podcast and have some fun. Mm. And um, my roommate came home like middle of the day and was like, "Hey, like I'll take you out to d d d d d dinner if you want," because it seemed like the rest of our roommates and stuff were gonna be doing stuff un until late or who knows. And uh, mm. I was like, "Yeah, sure, that sounds fine." Uh, all I have to do is be back at like eight thirty ish so that I could, you know, be on on the podcast. And that spiraled out of control and didn't happen. We didn't even get our food until, until like 8.30, 8.40. So <laughs> I was just like, yeah, this isn't ha like podcast is not happening. <laughs> yeah. But so here's here's why I almost didn't make it. We pre-gamed at our yeah. apartment here. We had like two or three shots of tequila went out to uh this restaurant called fat dragon uh it's a chinese Ooh. restaurant it's very good it's like a restaurant bar and i think they were ha having like 90s night because they were pumping the jams like it was Ooh. amazing um and yeah we got there and it's packed and so we can't get a seat at the bar or at a table just yet but they have like a standing table for you to like wait at and stuff and you can still get drinks and and stuff like that so they have these things called wasabi shots uh oh where you take like a tiny bit of wasabi and you stick it in your mouth and you keep it in your mouth for as long as you can um uh, and then they give you a big shot of vodka to wash it all down with when you're, you're when you're like i can't stand it anymore and you just have to like drink it all down so we did two of the, 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 the those uh, a restaurant offered a, you this not a yes. not a fraternity hazing ritual a restaurant gave you those <laughs> it is it is a restaurant it, it is their like specialty shot of just like uh, you want wasabi shots yeah yeah uh, <laughs> their specialty shot is just regular vodka but you have to store wasabi in your mouth first uh, yeah for as long as so you if can. you've got yeah. a if you've got a real high palate for wasabi you never get the shot at all it, this could be a non-alcoholic experience yeah. basically it's just like i just i just had wasabi at a restaurant <laughs> yum <laughs> yum um but but no so like i i we we took two of the, the those and then we had a mixed drink called cobra blood which was some oh my like, god vodka plum bitters I, 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 I don't know it had like this purple flower in it it was beautiful and it was it tasted amazing uh so i've i've at that point had tequila and vodka and then we get home we, we we get back here to the house and my roommate's boyfriend is is like hey i have more alcohol let's do shots wow and he has whiskey 
Uh, so I am mixing all my liquors. You're half, and that is you're not half a good your way thing. to a chumba wamba. You got the whiskey drink, I, you got uh, the vodka drink. Yep. Um, but the whiskey that he has is 100 proof knob creek. Uh, and we took shots. You gotta of put that, that away. Which is a, you gotta which put is a that bad away. Idea. <laughs> you need yeah. to lock it up. You need to have to um, solve a treasure map to get to anything that's 100 proof. Right. Absolutely. Uh, but we took one shot of that and immediately was just like, no more shots of that. <laughs> it was like, that's way, way too effective. Um, and I, I ended up pouring myself a second shot of that, but not to have as a shot, but just to like sip on. Um, yeah. And we then decided to play Uno. <laughs> to to which we have cards where you can write your own yeah. on them. One of which is take a shot. So we eventually someone played that. So we all had to take a shot, um, at which we took after the game. We did like one round, which lasted for quite a while. Um, mm. But yeah, then we we did our our our, sh our shot and my roommate had some 40 proof whiskey so we did that instead instead because we were like no more 100 we, we can't do that um but then right as we get done with that shot my other roommate and his girlfriend walk in and we're all just like hey welcome back and of course now that we're all here we all had to do another shot so i had like wow. like four whiskey shots and like th like three or four vodka shots and like two or three <laughs> uh te tequila shots i i did not feel good this morning at all <laughs> i f i figured as much yeah i knew i was like I didn't know when you were going to text me up. It could have been like night. Like I slept that long. I, I pulled an God. army of darkness. Can we still do this? I, I, I was prepared to have to be like, Melissa, I'm not going to be able to, to do this this weekend. Uh, but I, I woke up this morning at like seven and I felt like shit. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, I did not throw up. I managed to keep it all down because I had so much food. I, 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 that was the most food I've ever eaten in my life. Uh, yeah. So thankfully that helped to soak it all up. Um, but yeah, I woke up at like seven, didn't feel good at all. Eventually went back to sleep and woke up at like 1230 ish and was like, go puff. I need food. <laughs> send me, mm -hmm. send me help. Rescue me. Go puff. <laughs> <laughs> But here we are. I'm feeling a lot better. Um, Good. So that's that's been my my weekend so far. That's but. a nice start to the weekend. Uh, yeah. I just went to Target with my mom. <laughs> we, we bought <laughs> Christmas decorations. That's what I've been doing. What, what an obstacle. How did you survive? Like, how, how, how are you feeling? <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> I feel stronger than ever. Bottle brush trees <laughs> give me power. There you go. Bottle brush trees. What, what, what is that? That is, is, uh, is it the ones that I like, see on your bookshelf back there. Yeah, they're kind of like that. We're like, you know, the texture that like a um, like a, a kitchen scrubbing brush will have where it's like yeah. all those little plastic bristles that stick out and use it to scrub down into the bottom of a bottle. It's like yeah. that sort of a structure. But Christmas trees. I love these mm. things. <laughs> OK. I gotcha. Yeah, we we put our Christmas tree up, I guess, last weekend is is when we put it up. Um, we all all took uh, some of the decorations and stuff and put them on. So it was up in like 10 minutes. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> Just like, ah, there it is. It's good. So we are fully in the holiday spirit. It's it's a cr crazy month here at our household because it's my birthday. It's my roommate's birthday. It's Thanksgiving. Uh, it's also my roommate's girlfriend's birthday. Uh, so th th there's just a lot happening in this wow. house this entire month. We're just like, guys, we're going to be drinking like every weekend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
that's what we've been up to. Good stuff, though. Oh, um, what was I going to do? I have them in here. I don't have them in here. What? Um, so I have you, you've seen those posts on the Internet that are like, am I the asshole here? And they have some st- story where they sure. explain this, this situation. I, I have one that I want to bring to the podcast. Okay. <laughs> Except I'm changing the name to, am I the ear hole? I, All righty. <laughs> <it's, laughs> yep. Um, so I bought myself new headphones for my birthday i bought the gen 3 apple airpods these are yes. the like brand new apple airpods that are they're like they're it, they're technically they're like mid-tier ones they're not their cheap ones but they're not their most expensive ones are the ones that are like right in the middle um and i bought those for my birthday because i really like my airpods they work fantastically mm. i've put them through the wash twice on accident and they still work except for the microphone so okay i i I can't like take calls or stuff on them um but they still work just as headphones and they've worked fantastically and i've had them for three or four years now i think um Mm -hmm. and so i was like you know i think i'm due for an upgrade which is why i bought these new ones Melissa, never in my life have I experienced ear buds that don't fit. Oh. Whenever someone says, like, I don't know why, but they just, like, they don't fit my ear. They they keep popping out, all that stuff. I'm just sitting there like, you just sound like a weirdo, and your ear is, like, funky and shape. Like, who, like, what did you do Let's all point and laugh at the ear freak. Ear freak. Right. And so I'm sitting there like I must have the most like boring, normal ears like I I just have good ears. <laughs> you have average I, ears. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and how would you describe his ears? Oh, I don't know. Average. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I, I, I bought these and I finally understand the sensation. They don't fit. They don't fit my ears and they keep p- popping out. I hate it. This is the worst. Ah! I've never experienced it. So, Melissa, am I the ear hole? Am, am, am I, I the one that actually secretly has weird ear holes? And, like, I, I just happen to find the ones that fit me, like, the, the certain shape, and just never had to deal with it? Mm. I don't know. I, I don't. Like, I don't know. I have no context for the Apple uh, the ear pots. I've never... I don't think yeah. I've I've used an Apple device since like my iPod died in 2013. <laughs> so wow. I don't I don't know how they work. Maybe it's just not the brand for you. I got my Raycons. They work just fine. Yeah. A podcast yeah. sold them to me. A YouTube video sold them to me. Yep. That's how I get things. There you go. Yeah, like it's they're the well the the original ones I felt like had a standard shape like this is the shape that i had known from like my old sony headphones and stuff like that yeah just plain regular but maybe that's not the case maybe i'm the like weird one like everyone else's ears were good they were the ones with average ears but mine were the weird ones that that just like had a shape that fit these things and I, i just I don't know, but it's I I finally understand that sensation of of just like I like I I smile and it like boop it like pop, <laughs> pops out. It's just like no, like go back in. So I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you'll find some rubber tips that work for you. Maybe they're they're yes. too slick. There's not enough friction. Well. That that's the thing is these ones don't come with like rubber grips. And the the original AirPods that they k- came out with didn't. Like, I'm, I'm sure. I'm Why? sure you could get like covers or stuff like that. But like, I've never needed those things because they always fit. And then um, their AirPod Pros are the ones that have that like extra like rubbery bit thing on the end. Yeah. That do that. But these mid 
tier ones that I bought don't. Um, so I, I don't know. It's a mystery. Uh-huh. I maybe don't have average ears. I can't tell you. I've never, I've never seen them. <laughs> You, you, They're always behind these headphones. Right, I always <laughs> see you with headphones, so I can't speak these to them. Big studio, studio headphones. For all you know, I have pointy ears, and right, I'm you're, an elf, you're an elf. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I guarantee you, I have normal human ears. I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, so we didn't do an episode of the podcast yeah. this p- past week. Um, I kind of took a vacation off of work because my girlfriend was in town. We had a blast. We did all sorts of stuff. Uh, I kind of wanted to do a quick recap of some of the stuff Tell that me. we did here. So I kind of mentioned it to you on the review show, which we did record uh, mm. this past week. We tried to go to a bacon festival. Yeah, there, there, there was a well, we do a number of festivals here in R- Richmond. We have like a watermelon festival and a strawberry festival and this festival and that. And I don't think I knew that we did a bacon one, but apparently it's a thing. It has been. and. We went because it, like it sounded like you, they had a big se- section of downtown blocked off and there would be all kinds of vendors and stuff with like d- chocolate covered bacon or bacon burgers or this like bacon coffee or I don't know, just all sorts of stuff made with bacon. Mm. We got there. And there was no bacon. None. Ah! There was none bacon. It was terrible. It was this, this was like they had a place where vendors could line up and there were some vendors, but there weren't much. Uh, then they had a big like stage place where they had a live band and music and food you, you could get. So they had some barbecue. That was like the closest thing. I'm sure they had. Bay, 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 bacon you could get on like a cheeseburger or something there but that's not the like strange combinations of bacon that i was expecting right right and this yeah they just it, like they must have thought it was gonna, gonna storm that morning or something and had a bunch of cancellations or something because there was no bacon none whatsoever i was disappointed Man. Was it bought out already at that point by the time you got there? Is there just a run I mean, on bacon in your area? I, I, f- I feel like if that was the case, we would have seen these like empty vendor spots that have like, hey, like we're all yeah. sold out. Like, sorry, we're just no going to go home. You're not going to buy napkins yeah. from us. So. But <laughs> we'll the, see the, you next the year. tents, the t- tents weren't even there. Um, so it was just like they just never showed up in the first place place Ugh. who knows but Too scared uh, i did we did end up buying two bags of pop horn um one that was flavored like uh apple pie and it was amazing uh and then one that was flavored like a loaded baked potato and that was incredible that one was Ooh. amazing it was so good um so we at least walked away with some some good popcorn on that that stuff, sounds but. nice. Yeah. Um, I gave my girlfriend a tour of the campus and stuff that I li- live nearby and work at. All the apartments that I lived at while I was here. But like, hey, I used to live there. There's my comic book store over there. We go over Aww. here, do this, do that. Yeah. Um, we spent a day at the art museum. Uh, nice. We have the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts here. Uh, and... Uh, I got I I always forget how big that building is. I've been in there a couple times and it looks it's it's a big building, but it you think it's smaller than it actually is because you go in there and it just never ends. And you're just like, what? Uh. How, where are they hiding this building? Like, I, I don't understand. There's more rooms. But we saw uh, we saw an exhibit on Fabergé. 
uh so like all of the fancy shiny sparkly that truly eggs is a and fine stuff. art yeah yeah uh we got to design our own fabergé egg on some little like interactive ta- tablet thing that they had uh we got to see all sorts of like uh african masks and stuff like that um i, I think some south american masks and stuff like that as well we saw a bunch of modern art we saw some picasso some rothko uh we got to see um oh god what's his name uh andy warhol we got to see who else who else who else uh all sorts of stuff um yeah they they have so so much stuff there so that was good that was fun um and then just a day to go up to carry town here in richmond which is like a outdoor shopping slash bar district kind of thing so there's a chocolate store up there there's some uh, c- cool bookstores and toy stores and restaurants and b- b- bars and stuff like that. And it was a blast. We we had a great t- time. So nice. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good. Uh, besides Target, though, what all have you <laughs> been up to, up, up to? Have you done anything exciting? I feel like I've been dominating the c- c- conversation no, here. I don't I don't do much. I'm getting ready for my family's big Christmas party that we skipped over mm-hmm. last year. It's coming back. So I'm playing a major role in that. So I just Christmas I is made back, the, baby. I I made invitations. I made a spreadsheet. I made a Google Doc that people can locate online. I made a bit.ly link. I did so many things. Hey, there you go. To like get my my aunts and uncles to sign up on this website like just tell me what you're bringing who's got shrimp cocktail i'm I'm gonna make a charcuterie platter i got a charcuterie board i've been buying these decorations i'm going to have a floral centerpiece on each table so i'm just drinking a lot of wine so that i have bottles i can use there you go drinking I'm a just, lot of wine that works i'm just in full party planning mode i do that i started season three of the leftovers as rowdy as it's ever been. <laughs> nice. I have yet to start, start, start it, but I'm excited. Mm. I'm back in on 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 that. Well, you you did get to watch some stuff, right? I watched a handful of things. Yeah, I finally Ooh, I finally watched I the night manager, which is a show I've pitched to you a couple times. And, and I gave in. I'm like, it's only six episodes. I'm going to carve out time for this myself. The it's some manager. BBC espionage crime show where Tom Hiddleston plays a former soldier who's the night manager of this fancy hotel. And he learns that Hugh Laurie is, he is his public face as his philanthropic businessman. But secretly he's into all sorts of like shady arms dealings. And he's like, I'm going to go. And Olivia Coleman sends him undercover. She's like, I need you to pretend to be a different guy and like break into his circle and we're going to expose him. Uh, Interesting. It's pretty nice. It looked beautifully shot. Elizabeth Debicki's in it. She's one of my favorites. When I was watching it on Prime, frequently there would be a weird flicker in dark scenes. And I don't know what that was. I don't know if that's the program itself or something with Prime, or something with my Blu-ray players watching it on, or the HDMI cable, or what. There was just a flicker, a ghostly flicker from something. So, honestly, I was not looking at the show most of the time. I couldn't look at it. It was too distracting. Oh, man. That's So I'm just sitting there, I'm practicing my calligraphy, and I'm just listening. Uh, listening to all the spy espionage going on. And then I'll look up and it is a beautiful vista in Spain or somewhere. So a great show for tourism, which is mainly what spy things are for. It's tourism, but with like guns and nice suits. Yeah. So you mentioned calligraphy. Yeah. I I, I had to, is is this just in like to make invitations to this holiday party or is this something you do and know how to do? 
I'm learning it. I wanted a physical hobby because I do this yeah. where I make just amorphous audio and video files. I love to bake, but as soon as you eat the pie, the pie is gone. So I wanted yeah. a hobby that would lead me to producing something tangible. Okay. And, you know, just That's hand fun. lettering and calligraphy was the easiest tangible thing I thought I could pick up. All I have to buy yeah. is a couple nice pens. And then, like, premium printer paper that's as smooth as it can possibly be. It's like writing on glass. Yep. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I, I've i always been interested in things like that, which is kind of why I went into g graphic design. I was just like, I like letter forms and making yeah. them and studying them and all of that stuff, which is why I got into graffiti when i was real young just like how mm -hmm. do they make these fancy shapes and, and it actually says something what how <laughs> ah so yeah good stuff good Me? for you yeah it's it's a nice thing to just do while i'm watching tv <laughs> you, you can go. just work on like one practice sheet a night i watched uh m night Shyamalan's the happening and i wanted Ooh, to sorry. tell you this no, don't apologize to me, Kyle. You know how I lead, leave my life. You know how, who I am. I do. I do. That I know that movie. <laughs> I saw that in it theaters. Is it is not good. I, yep. But I <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I like enough of M. Night Shyamalan's style that even his poor quality efforts, I can still find like a couple shots or a couple moments of mood and tone that work for me i i like at least 15 percent of a movie and some days 15 percent is all i need but i bring this up just because so trees are killing people the wind blows through the trees and people die but it takes them a while to figure that out so everybody's yep. just panicking and like leaving the cities because the first of these plant attacks happen in cities they're like I don't know. Let's just get out of here. Let's just drive. Let's get out into the country. Smaller populated areas. Maybe then we'll be safe. And Mark Wahlberg and Zoe Deschanel and, and this sullen child they're responsible for. They it's just like some couple in a truck comes and picks them up like, hey, we're heading out of town. We've got room in the truck. We're here to help you. And they like stop by uh, these people. They stop by their house, to, like get some supplies before they keep driving. And the guy says, I packed some hot dogs for the trip. I figured hot dogs would be a good idea. You know, like they taste good, plenty of protein. They have a cool shape. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and that's the highlight of the film. The point where this guy says hot dogs have a cool shape. Man, that movie, like it's, it's, it's like we said, it's a bad movie, but it's also... It's one of those films that you kind of just have to watch and experience for yourself because it's so yeah. bad. And yeah. it's, it's just it's so wild. It's so oddly toned and, and the, the, the line deliveries yes. are like, what, who thought this was a good idea to ask that old lady for lemonade the way that he asked for lemonade? Right. Just, that, that's that scene always stood out to me of just like, this is bizarre. Like, who, who thought this was a good idea? It's an unnatural film. I watched it as it really is. a fan of the majority of M. Night Shyamalan's other works. But if you're just a movie goer, I don't think it holds any value for you. Unless you've really been no. wanting a scene where, like, a weird old guy talks about hot dogs. <laughs> that have a good shape. A cool, Creepy. a cool shape. A co Excuse me, <laughs> like he, Melissa. A cool shape. Like, he thinks, <laughs> like, a burger, a burger patty is lame. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild. He's like, lunch, lunch meat. That's for squares. Hot dogs are cool. Hot dogs specifically. No, I didn't bring a, a sausage. There's not a bratwurst in here. Too curly. I like a straight, a straight hot dog. Too curly. I like hot dog Who based cinema. Sausage that's too curly. <laughs> They've got a slight curve. I'm just trying to get into this man's head as to why he's like hot dogs. Cool shape. <laughs> It's you, like you um, do like hot dog references in movies, right? The whole thing with the, <laughs> the, the, the flash and now this. 
you're you're, right. you're uh, gonna have to start a like a buzzfeed list of like top five hot dog moments in cinema history so far it's these two and then i'll see if yeah. i come up with others <laughs> I also wanted to tell you about an audio drama I've been listening to this week. Okay. This is season two of a podcast called The Last Movie, which itself is a spinoff of Tannis, uh, which itself is not really a spinoff, but it's in the same narrative family as the Black Tapes podcast, right, which yeah. we're both big fans of. And you've never checked out Tannis, correct? I did for the first like two seasons, okay. I think, like first two or three Okay. Something like that. A couple seasons in, they did this side podcast called The Last Movie about this movie that if people Was try and upload one? it to the internet, it gets it gets taken down immediately. It's like this mysterious underground film artifact. And it's called The Last Movie because supposedly if you watch it, then you die. Yeah, or like you watch uh, okay. it and like everybody it they'll screen they'll screen it at a theater and then the theater will go, they will go mad uh, they will attack each other blood will run through the aisles that sort of nonsense and it's a I mystery gotcha. it's an investigation into is this thing real if it is real where did it come from how did it get like that what happened to the people who made the movie and then season two of this podcast is hey we let the interns just do their idea so it's not really related to season one they mention the last movie like the cinematographer for that movie is also supposedly the cinematographer of this it's another movie mystery so this is a spin-off of a spin-off kind of but it's six episodes and there's enough of it that stands on its own and it's got enough interesting ideas that i recommend checking it out just season two of the last movie it's about this it Hmm. That's that's what I was just about to add. Like, hey, if, if this is a spinoff of that spinoff and they're working with a new idea here, what like what is the last movie to season two then? Like, what, what is that story? It's the interns start doing a podcast about Internet mysteries. And what they land on specifically is this guy writes in saying, I came across a YouTube video where the timestamp is two hours and 76 minutes which is an impossible timestamp. It would, it would be three hours and 16 minutes. Why does it say this? YouTube broken. I've never seen this on anything else. And he's like, I clicked on it and like the video like went down, like it disappeared. It was taken off, but like I was able to get like a one minute clip of it before it disappeared. And it's like a two women at a coffee shop, like pretty standard cliche, like romantic comedy sort of scene where these two mm -hmm. friends meet and one of them's like, how was your date last night? And she's like, oh, dinner was nice, but not as good as breakfast the next morning. Girl, mm. you didn't. Tell me about it. It's one of those where this girl's yeah, describing. Hot dogs. This they have such a cool shape. <laughs> <laughs> hot where dogs for breakfast. Describing... No, hot <laughs> dog pop cereal. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's an entirely separate mystery. I look forward to um, our first serial based mystery audio drama. Serial the food. Nothing to do with serial the crime investigation. Honestly, Just a serial be, mystery. That's a fucking great idea. Just call it serial, but it's spelled as the breakfast here and it's just it's it's a it's a spoof on serial the actual podcast that like launched a lot of these like right. pseudo are is it real is it not fiction audio p podcast things that, that, that was a real hilarious. one though right again i've never yes, listened to serial yeah. i only listen to fake serials yeah. but the so the the <laughs> clip of the movie they're That's watching brilliant. looks like a standard romantic comedy until this woman's like so I was getting ready for my date and I had like a little hair. I was doing my makeup and I had like a little hair poking out of my eye and I thought it was like a loose eyelash. So I tried to pull it out and then it just kept going. Like I just kept pulling it and pulling it. And then there was all of this hair coiling up in the sink and it kept and going. It and it became rainbow thicker. flags. <laughs> right. As they're like. <laughs> And she's and this whole time she's telling this horrifying like body horror story. It's like that yeah. same vocal tone as if she's talking about her date and her friend is like, uh-huh. 
Yeah. And yeah. then what happened? Just, like no, no reaction, no change in tone while the content shifts to horror. And she's like, yeah, That's then I just like cut. Creepy. I just cut it. I took scissors out of my purse and I cut it. And then the little bit of hair that was left wriggled back into my head like a worm. Uh, yeah. And anyway, then he then he came out with cocktails. Like, it's, it's so like this is. They've got like a minute. They've got like 90 seconds of movie. And that's what the scene is. And they're like, okay, we're going to find out what this is. And it's them tracking down who wrote the script. Who are these actresses? They find out that they disappeared. The, the, the screenwriter disappeared. The guy who made the costumes disappeared. Like this is a, a cursed item. Uh, and it seems like it's sucking people in. If you are related, if you are in any way attached to this movie, you vanish. And the movie's like this weird self-perpetuating cycle that exists out there on the Internet. That's interesting. I dug it a lot. It's, it's one of the, the neater audio fiction mysteries I've come across in a while. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. And like I said, it's only like six episodes. You could listen to it within like two and a half hours. You know, uh, <laughs> if you're OK with the body horror description. Which that's all that it is, is like within that chunk of movie that they find. It's not yeah. more horror than that, than just an otherwise normal romantic comedy woman describing a, a weird infinite hair coming out of her body. Go oh, wild stuff. Well, speaking of podcasts, this is the Captain's Log number 169. Oh, Hope you Holy guys heck, are enjoying didn't. this so far. My name is Kyle Sp Springer and I'm joined as always right. by Melissa Wilkinson. Here we are, what, like 40 Hello. minutes in already-ish? Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff with that. Uh, well, how about this? I will do my cinema corner. Uh, yeah. And then after that is maybe when we'll take our break for housekeeping. Cool. And then we'll, uh, we, we got uh, some more like Marvel and Disney stuff to talk Yeehaw. about. All, yeah, all, all sorts of stuff there uh, that I'm excited. So my cinema corner, uh, I have two things that I want to talk about. I've watched a bunch more, but there's two things that I want to talk about. First is this movie that I found on Netflix. I, I don't I think it was a Netflix original. I don't remember. Um, it's called Mind Horn. Have you seen this or come across I have, it while you? I not at all. When you say the name to me, it sounds like Chris mind Angel's horn. mind freak, but hornier. <laughs> I wish. Um, no. So the we, we watched this when my girlfriend was here and we had a night where we were like, hey, let's watch something neither of us have heard of. And just like, let's find something that we think will both like and so we found this we kind of stumbled across this as we were just searching for things on netflix and it is a comedy crime story uh it's a british movie again i think was a netflix original i don't remember um but it's about this guy who used to be a character on British television in the 80s. He was Detective Mind Horn, and he had he had a cybernetic eye that could see the truth. And I like all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, think like a uh, night rider or like that style show um and he he th maybe thought he was a little bit more f famous than he actually was he thought his show was maybe a little bit better than it actually was um and so his life ends up just kind of going downhill and he's he ends up b b b b b in this kind of washout um and and just no one really knows him or re 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 remembers him but he's like but i'm mind horned like come on yeah. you know me um and uh so so you, like that's the back sto story on on him but uh -huh. yeah it takes place in modern day time where he is this washed up 
actor and there is a murder that happens and the person that the police suspect is the killer will only speak to detective mind horn wow but this is a character that he hasn't played in like 30 or 40 years and, and, and like is not j- like he's older he's a little bit he, he he has more of a gut now right like he just like he's not the same thing and this is like his one ch- chance to like be mind horn again uh and so he helps the the police solve the case but it it was really good it was funny nice um good I, it like if you're into the like nacho libre hot rod style ah. comedies this is maybe a b- british v- version of the, 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 that there um if you like 80s action TV shows or movies, like it's it's kind of a spoof on that stuff. Or if you just like crime stories, uh, like it it it's it's a crime uh, movie. It was fantastic. I highly nice. recommend it. Go check it out. Um, I I think down the road it might be fun to be like on the review show. Let's watch Mindhorn someday. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I highly recommend it. Uh, And then last but not least, the other thing is I have seen the first episode of this new Cowboy Bebop live action show on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, The whole season is out on Netflix. I haven't had the chance to binge watch it all like I was hoping, Um, but I've only seen the first one so far. Uh, I'm a big fan of the original. It's a mm-hmm. classic. It's one of those things of like, you guys don't really need to remake this because it's still so good. Like, it's still mm-hmm. just it, it, it is what right it is. Um, and Netflix doesn't have a great uh, tr- track record for doing live action adaptions of anime. Uh, but that's not only on Netflix. Like, there's been a lot mm-hmm. of adaptions of anime that just did not go well um and they seem to put a lot of care into this one i remember they released uh the opening credits of Mm. the show because the original has these that like this iconic sequence uh that's so good and the music Mm -hmm. is amazing uh and they killed that opening sequence. It was nice. like perfect, spot on. Uh, they brought back Yoko Kano to do all the music and all that stuff. So it sounds like it should. Right. And then Good. the when they when they did the opening credits, it's just it's spot on. Like, it's perfect. It's just like this. Yes. Like, this is what I want from a live action adaption of that thing. Um and so now that I've seen that first one, I can say I like it a lot. I I I think it's going to be pretty good. Um, of c- course, I still have not seen the entire thing. So it could go downhill after this. Uh, but what I have seen, I've been very much like, this is cool. This is good. I like this. Um, nice. Cowboy Bebop is really interesting. And I think the. The live action adaption really heightens what a big like mash of styles and genres it actually is because it's a Western set in space, but it's also a sci fi because it's set in space, but it's also yeah. cr- crime noir. But then it's all yeah. set to like blues and jazz and funk and stuff like that. So it just has this like really eclectic vibe and i think so far the live action has like really accentuated that uh in a way that i don't think like the original not smooths it over in a bad way but like melds it together in a very cohesive way and i think this is too but still like making sure you know like there's just a bunch of styles in this thing it's kind of neat to see this like collage of stuff so i'm excited to watch more of that one nice i'll have to check that out i remember watching 
some of Cowboy Bebop when I was a kid because it aired on Adult Swim. And I really liked it, but I don't <laughs> think I've seen it in over a decade. And looking back on it, I don't remember any specific episodes anymore. I remember the vibe of it, all the, the main characters and their full names, but that's yep. it. Can't tell yep. you an event that happens in Cowboy Bebop anymore. So I, I'm due I for a rewatch of the original anime itself. I think it's also on Netflix. They mm. got it like a month or two before this live action one came out. Uh, so they were like, hey, go watch the original first. Oh, good, good stuff. Good stuff. Highly recommend checking it out. Um, but with that, I say we take a break for housekeeping. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we'll be back with some more movie talk. TV show talk, Marvel talk, yeah. Disney talk, all that stuff. So we will be right back. We put a lot of hard work into the shows that we make. And yes, we make multiple different shows here at The Whatnots. And we'd love it if you would check them all out. You can find out more information on our website at thewhatnots.com, as well as your favorite podcasting platform of choice. When you type in The Whatnots, all of our shows will pop up right there. Just don't forget to give us a nice rating and review if you like the shows. If you want to support what we do here at The Whatnots, patreon.com slash The Whatnots is the best place to do that. You can support us for as little as a dollar a month. You can get all kinds of exclusive content at the $3 tier. You can also get a shout out and thank you on all of our shows at the $5 tier. You can support us on Twitch by subscribing to our channel at twitch.tv slash the whatnots. And we would love to have you all join us for our live streams and talk with us in the chat. And lastly, we have merch. If you want to grab yourself a shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or something else, go to the whatnots.com slash store to pick up some merch today. And we are back. A big shout out to all of our Patreon supporters, especially those at the $5 tier. So thank you to Sam for helping us out, for supporting us. Thanks, we love you Sam. a lot. Thank you indeed. Uh, cool things that we have been doing here at The Whatnots. Uh, we did mention season three of The Leftovers uh, here in the podcast. That is what we have been covering as our like end of the month special uh, on the review show. Uh, and that show is very interesting. Uh, about like 2% of the population just disappeared. Mm. And it's kind of all about how people deal with it and how they move on with their life or get stuck in their life or yeah. try to find answers in all sorts of things, which maybe makes it sound really boring, but this show goes in really interesting places uh, to where season one, I personally was just like, it's good. Hasn't hooked me yet. And then season two hit and I was just like, what the fuck is happening here? Like, this is wild. This is fun. Yeah. Um, it's, so I'm excited it is a, to dig into the third one. To, it's a delightfully weird show. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Indeed. Uh, big. Th this has been a big video game news. Oh. week. Uh, there's been all sorts of stuff. So if you guys want to hear uh, some of us talk about video games and all the stuff at activision blizzard that's been happening over there that's a mess um if you guys want to hear about halo or the new P -P 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 pokemon all that stuff you guys should go check out crossplay uh but we are coming up on our 100th episode of C Crossplay. Uh, I think we will be recording that uh, the first weekend in December. Uh, so be on the lookout for that. We're going to be celebrating and hanging out and playing some games and talking about our favorite g games of all t time. Uh, stuff like that. So much to celebrate over there. Last but not least. We finally have our spoiler cast uh, for the Eternals up um, on, yeah. on the website and up on YouTube and on the podcast feeds for the Reactor Core. We also did a trailer re reaction to the brand new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. I think this is their second trailer that they've 
put out uh, wild stuff in in, in that. So exciting wild stuff. Yeah, um, I am looking forward to that a lot. And then starting this week, Hawkeye is coming out. Yeah, and we will be covering that on the reactor core as well week to week. So be on the lookout for all of that. So house has been kept. Yep. House has been kept indeed. Um, oh, I guess I can rope this into housekeeping too. But in two weeks here on the captain's log, also that first weekend in December. Yeah. Uh, Melissa, you and I uh, are going to be doing our annual Rotten Tomatoes movie predictions show. How do you feel about mm. this one? I, I look forward to it. I think it's fun. This will be the third of these episodes that we're doing. We started it at the beginning of 2020, predicting yep. uh, the Rotten Tomatoes movie scores for a variety of films we were excited for over the year. The last December, first week of last December, we did our episode looking back on the scores everything got and then predicting the scores for the 2021 movies. So that's what this will be. We're going to recap 2021 yeah. and look forward to 2022. And I think we have a pizza bet on the line Oh, yeah. Whoever, whoever wins gets pizza. Oh. oh, man. We're coming up on two pizza bets because we're going to have that and then we're going to have bingo for review show yeah. bingo, too. Yeah, which you are cr crushing me in a review I show <laughs> bingo right now. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm super excited about this one. I like these little, little, little traditions and competitions that we we do it's, in these. Shows. It's, it's fun, fun to have games. It's fun to have events. It's fun to have uh, tasting days where we just eat a bunch of candy. Yeah. Add some variety to the, 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 the whole thing, right? Event. I like our annual it. events. Yeah. I do, 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 like, I've not looked at our, like, Rotten Tomatoes predictions sheet no. since we filled it out last year. So I have no idea how any of that is going to go. Um, it was interesting to do it last year because it was very, it was much earlier on in the pandemic. So, like, almost everything got delayed or pushed yeah. back so most of that stuff is now on our list again yeah. this year um so yeah it, it's it's gonna be interesting to see we'll have a much fuller list this year for sure but uh i'm excited i'm excited that's mm. a good one that's a good one indeed melissa a while yes. back hulu put out uh, season one of a Modoc cartoon. Uh, yeah, it's the it, it looked kind of like Robot ch Chicken, right? Where they had the action figures slash claymation slash stop motion stuff. Yeah, that's that's how that that show was oh. made. Um, and it was yeah, it's a Marvel and they had his uh him do a show there it was like one part uh robot ch chicken one part modern family uh yeah. and the show was really good i think a lot of people glossed over it or just didn't know it exists because yeah. it's not on disney plus with all the rest yeah. of the marvel stuff um, i haven't gotten to it myself yet but but i will it's yeah, it's Pat Oswalt it. playing a big floating head, and I think that's great. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Uh, well, Hulu has now released another Marvel cartoon. Cartoon. Uh, th this one is uh, jar jar on on the computer and stuff like that, so it's not the stop motion stuff. This is Hit Monkey, Marvel's Hit Monkey. Yes, it is a talking monkey that is a hitman. Uh -huh. uh, Yes, that is also a real Marvel comic uh, that you can get out there. Uh, I haven't gotten to watch this yet, but I, I was wondering if this had been on your radar. Like, is this something no. you saw advertised? No, you didn't see, see anything? I, I think you told me about it. I, I know that I know everything that you just said and nothing more. There's a, a monkey who is a hitman. I think maybe he wears a little suit. I, th I think so. Yeah, I know nothing about this character. 
Um, I, I I don't know anything about this. I don't know why they're even making a hit monkey show. Uh, but to be honest, I I like the fact that they are that they were just like you yeah. know what? Let's make a hit monkey sh- show. Like let's just go wild and weird. Um. So I'm I'm excited to check that one out, but I at least wanted to put that out there to be yeah. like, hey, this thing is out there. They're like they're still making it exists cartoon, and yeah, it's not. I I don't think it's meant to be a cartoon for kids. Is like it's mm. I, I think it's supposed to be an adult uh, cartoon that's a little more violent, maybe a little funnier uh, stuff like that. It's not just this like oh he's an adorable Cute. little monkey and he beats up bad guys. Humor is that. for adults. Do not let the children have access to any humor. Adult cartoon must be funnier than kids cartoon. <laughs> humor is not for children. <laughs> yeah, so I just wanted, wanted to put that out there. Out there in the universe on the podcast that, that it, it's a thing. And I like mm. to support per- projects like that, even though it's from a big giant co- corporation like Disney. It's just these smaller things that I'm like, n- yeah. no one's really going to go watch that. And it sucks because I want more like this. Like, give me these weirder shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, so. There you go. Melissa, I think we forgot about Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters I, I've, Afterlife. I've, I've been thinking about it. If you if you want to talk about Ghostbusters Afterlife, I will go out and see it. That's the thing is I probably won't get, get a chance to, but it came out yesterday, right? Yes. We're recording this on Saturday. Yeah. So it came out uh, on my birthday. Uh, yeah. This snuck up on me because I, I know at one point we were like, yeah, maybe we can do a, a reactor core on it. And we just never really talked about it again. And then it was here. And it's like, it's here. It's out now. And I was just like, oh, I didn't even know it was c- coming out yet. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I completely forgot. So uh, I, I, I don't know if I'll have time to do that one, unfortunately. Hmm. Um, but I, 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 well, I don't know when. I guess if it's year if it's out now it probably won't be out on streaming services till like what march of next oh i don't year? know maybe earlier than that yeah february there, there are quicker I, and quicker turnaround times i i was like yeah i mean if if this is like out this holiday season on hbo max it's ghostbusters after i don't, I don't know who, who who owns yeah i don't know Busters, but uh it would almost be a potential thing we could do for our first episode of the re- review show for the year where we do the like long that'd be nice movie thing we could do all the ghostbusters movies. Ooh, i do like that, that idea interesting yeah um but i i don't want to like exclude this one if that makes sense yeah but it's, it's also Let's like it, it might, it, it just, yeah it might just not be available yet so oh well Let's see Thank you um melissa disney yeah. plus day talk to yes! me yes the what main are you excited event about? well on the marvel news front we got our our first looks at moon knight miss marvel and she hulk dinner yeah, we D- did glamorous green body she <laughs> The effects look cool. We didn't get a look at her face, but we just had some like body action shots of She-Hulk yep. walking around doing stuff. It looks excellent. Yeah, I'm excited. Um, they I, I saw on I so I missed the actual like live stream presentation thing. I uh-huh. did, 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 didn't watch it as it was happening, but I saw that on Disney Plus they had like breakdowns of like, hey, if you want to know all the Marvel. Yeah. News, Go watch this thing or here's all the Star Wars. Here's all the Pixar yeah. stuff, right? Um, I, I I only ended up watching the Marvel one, uh, but I saw that there was a new teaser for like the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Uh, I don't know that's if it was so much out. a teaser as it was just like, let's sit down and talk to Ewan McGregor about it. And he's yeah. like, yeah, it's great to work with Hayden again. 
Yeah. It's not there's not a lot of substance there, but it is good to like hear updates. Kenobi will come to us soon. Yes. Um it is in the works. I I think yeah. is a good way to put that one. Um but yeah, there's there you know, they announced more like behind the scenes look on Boba Fett and how we made that and all of this yeah. stuff and uh stuff like that. But I think this the Marvel one was the big one. Was the meaty like, one. Yes. Yeah, the the hot dog shaped one. Uh, it was real cool. Um, uh, yeah. So we got first looks at She Hulk. Uh, I liked that a lot. My d- dad said that she has to wear these like prosthetic arms to make her arms look more muscly. I don't know how true that is, but he was like, I read something that that's what they have to do on the show on the show. Uh, but she looked great. I'm excited uh-huh. for that one. I'm yeah. excited for that one to be silly. If that yes. makes sense. Yes. Like, I want that one to it's, just be silly. It seems like it will be like maybe the most overtly comedic out of the new I, crop of I, shows. I, I, I hope so. Um, but also the their like logo that they put reminds me a lot of the like Nip Tuck logo. You it's remember got a slash that? In it the has middle. That, yeah, yeah. That's that slash. Uh, so I think there will also be some legal j- j- drama. I in, hope so. Like, I well, I mean, I'm expecting there to be, but like, I I guess I mean more on like a like they're taking this seriously. Like, this is a legal show that they are gonna go all in on and it's not the it's not like there will be silliness but i think they will also know when to be like okay we need to be serious here so that looks good uh moon knight spooky i was excited about that one yeah it looks a lot spookier uh i i like the idea of moon knight as a character i've read some of his stuff not much uh he's it's just it's a fascinating character i'm excited to see what they do with him and his multiple personalities and the more like batman like costume and dealing with demons or who knows what um there's there's a lot that they could explore there and oscar isaac is so good like I, he, yeah like, he's i think gonna have a field day with just all of the stuff that he can do like uh lots to do like james mcavoy in split right where he had to do all these like multiple characters an excellent and... performance excellent indeed yeah i'm i'm hoping that this is in a sense oscar isaac's split in 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 that sense that he gets to do all of these like weird things uh with all mm. these multiple Multiple personalities. So good stuff there. Uh, Miss Marvel. This is actually not really our first look. We ha- we have gotten a small teaser before. It, w- it was like a mm. 15 second like look. Uh. Um, but yeah, this was a, a much b- bigger chunk of Miss Marvel. I actually ju- just started reading these co- comics. Um, mm-hmm. I, I read that first volume uh, just like a week or two ago uh, on my own because I knew that the show was c- coming up and I, I'm, I've been trying to get my girlfriend into some comics and she's read a number of the events and the books here and we've finally gotten to the, the spot where that character gets introduced and I'm like we should read this one to get, get, get together because I haven't read this yet and I think you would like her a lot so exciting stuff of those three what was your favorite oh i'm really looking forward to she hulk i i like the idea of that this is going to be a legal procedural we're going to get to see that side of crime fighting in the mcu i i like the specificity i like how a legal drama can open you up to like Real, like I found the tiniest little loophole, and that's how I've defeated you. Instead of just, I can punch the best. Yep. Which she Absolutely. also can. She can also punch the best because she's She Hulk. The effects yeah. look great. 
I like the one shot we get where she's dressed like from the 1970s, like it's the old Incredible Hulk TV show, her and Bruce. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if that's part of a, a a fantasy sequence or what, but the idea that we could be playing around with stuff like that is it's delightful. I yep. I look forward to the more psychological thriller nature of Moon Knight and the j- just sweet coming of age story that Miss Marvel is going to be. But I think She Hulk in, in particular is going to be right up my alley. Hell yeah, that all sounds wonderful. Mm-hmm. I'm excited for that. But we got all sorts of other stuff that they announced, some that we already kind of knew. But I think the two other, well, well, let's see here. I yeah, I think the two like other biggest things is X Men ninety seven. Oh yeah, and then this this Spider Man cartoon. I don't remember what it was called. And Agatha. There's oh, yeah. we well, yeah. we'd heard rumors of an Agatha Harkness spinoff show, and now it's called Agatha House of Harkness, which mm-hmm. is exciting because it seems like a clear nod to House of M, the X Men comics event. And I'm also curious yeah. who exactly her house is. At what makes up a house? It's her and all of her witchy ancestors. I know that, but does she have uh, sisters? Do you, has, she, has she had a child at any point in her her two or three hundred years of living? Who, who constitutes her house? Yeah. Is she still hanging out with Ralph Boner? Is he still here? <laughs> <laughs> well, she, because at the, at the end of WandaVision, spoilers for that, she is kind of trapped in, in yes. that town as in that, like, fantasy of the, like, 1950s housewife, mm. helpful neighbor. Um, thing there so yeah we don't know if this will continue that story or will be a flashback or will be a bit of both i think who knows but x-men 97 this is an interesting one i think this is honestly kind of a brilliant move of just like let's just bring back that x-men cartoon that everyone loved in the 90s um it, which it, the the show was not without its problems and all of that stuff, but uh, it's just such a beloved show that this is now continuing the story in the like same style of artwork and stuff. That's awesome. That's so that cool. Is cool. Yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff for them. I'm excited to see what they do with that. But then there's this Spider-Man one, which I, I, yeah. I think we know the least about. Um, but it seems to be in the style of the like 60s comics, this like old school, just art, like real c- c- classical look to the characters there. But mm. I, yeah, it just I, I'm, I'm interested to know what they're going to do with it, because I don't just they haven't said that. Right. It's just like, what? what is this? This looks neat. Tell me more. <laughs> it's it's just a vintage style Spider-Man cartoon. What else do you need to know? I guess so. Yeah. Um, we have that. We yeah, have um, excited. They've already renou- announced a show called Echo, which will be a show focusing yep. on a character we're about to meet in Hawkeye. Do you think is interesting that before we've even seen this person, <laughs> she's already getting a spinoff. So I'm now even more invested in meeting her. Yeah. Uh. I don't know much about Echo. Um, the only thing I do know, if I'm not mistaken, in the recent Avengers run that Jason Aaron is writing, I think she becomes the next Phoenix. Like, the, oh, like, yeah, because uh, the, the Phoenix is its own force, like within the Marvel Universe. It's not only Gene gray from the x-men uh that 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 ends up with the phoenix inside her but yeah i if i'm not mistaken i think she ends up as phoenix it's kind of cool kind of interesting but yeah besides that i know nothing about her Mm -hmm. so it's it's fun to dive into whole new worlds And then we just got yeah. reminders in um, like, you know, refined logos for Armor Wars and Ironheart. And we got just uh, a f- 
footage of Nick Fury for Secret Invasion where he's like, look at me. I took my eye patch off. Look at my scars. Yeah. Secret so Invasion. We, we, we got a new picture of him without an eye patch. We see his scars it's, there. He has a big old is, bushy it is, beard. It's video. It's footage. But so little happens that it might as well be a photo. It's, it's just a like GIF. a GIF. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the interesting thing to me is that they yeah. changed the color of the logo when they revealed it. And oh, when 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 they. What we've seen so far of the secret invasion thing, I think has just been this like one color, like red logo, if I'm not mistaken. And they finally changed it to purple and green. Which is more mm. of the scroll colors and it more along the lines of what that story was in the comics where the scrolls uh-huh. invade and you don't know who to trust because yeah. they're shapeshifters and all that stuff. But we had often been theorizing that, like, what if the secret invasion isn't the, sc- the scrolls? Like, what if it's something else? Could it be vampires? Mm. Could it be uh, say, like yeah, that? Who knows what? Yeah. Um, but I, I, I think this is kind of more of a confirmation of that. Yes, it will be squirrels, um, or hulks. What if it's all hulks? hulks. Purple and oh green. Oh my! Secret invasion. That's so of the expensive. Hulks. <laughs> <laughs> it's more expensive than a scroll. Well, I, I'm, I'm joking. I, I don't think it will actually be the hulks, but there is a comic ca- called World War Hulks. Or I, I, yeah. I think that's it, right? Where like all of the Avengers characters get infected with the like Hulk stuff, so they all are Hulked out, and uh, yeah, mm. it's weird. But I'm excited and about then, that one. Finally, we've got a, a Marvel Zombies show. Just, just yeah. all zombies. Just that one episode of What If the whole time. Yeah, that's awesome. Um. I, 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 I like that they are potentially taking these ideas and then spinning them out into their own thing. Or I don't know if they're going back to those original comics and doing that story and if it will actually fit in with the what if one. But yeah, it's getting it's it's its own thing. I like I like that they're now being like, hey, let's just do some cartoons and stuff that aren't necessarily in the MCU. Yeah, I like that we've got these thing. sort of mythological tent poles, like shows that are definitely going to have an impact on the MC at large. And then we do have these other things that are less yeah. attached, less involved, j- just more fun, casual viewing. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Stuff, good stuff. Um, I think the only other thing we'll... Was the I Am Groot show new? I don't think I, I really think I, remember I, that. I think I remember something about it. I think it's just a, a cute Maybe. little Groot cartoon. I think there have yeah. been similar shows on Disney Plus about like Forky or Olaf. It's yeah. like just, ah, oh, just cute thing focus. <laughs> yeah. Cute things. Who doesn't like cute things? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, um... I, I liked all the Marvel news that we got here. I was honestly kind of disappointed, though, by the lack of Star Wars stuff. There's a show here. they announced last year called The Acolyte, I think, that was going to be like yes. a political thriller in the Star Wars universe. And that's been the one I've been most intrigued by. And I've heard yeah. zero things about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that they we we know the Obi Wan Kenobi show is in the works. We know yeah, the, the Cassian Book of Andor Boba Fett is in the works, and yeah, and Cassian Andor. It seems like the Ryan Johnson Star Wars spinoff movies, as well as the Rogue Squadron uh, yes. show that uh, what's her name. Patty Patty Jenkins Jenkins yes uh, that she was doing I, it sounds like both of those have been shelved um, that they're not necessarily doing those anymore or at, at least looking for new people to do them I'm not sure 
Um, yeah, I know. I you know. I'd have to look into it. I think I heard they were stalled, and stalled is different than shelved. But who knows? Yeah, I don't know the exact details on that. But yeah, kind of disappointed in the lack of Star Wars stuff. That's that's there because mm-hmm. I I really do feel like they're at a point where like they can put out just as much stuff as Marvel with with that stuff right that they can just be like we got this show we got this movie we got this thing over here we got this cartoon we got this comic we got this book we got this video game all sorts of stuff i don't know but hmm. yeah maybe star wars takes longer to generate <laughs> maybe they have to i know so little about star wars here. i'll I'll take what I can get when I can get it. Uh, this week was Life Day. I celebrated Life Day. I watched some of the holiday <laughs> special again. So, like, I've got that. I can just watch some of that every year, and I'm pretty good. Gotcha. Yeah, we, my girlfriend and I started a Star Wars watch through uh, while she was here. We did the original trilogy, and we've made it through the prequels now. So we're about to do the, like, two spin-offs hey. of solo and rogue one uh and then i'm sure i'll go back and be like okay let's just watch the like first 10 minutes of a new hope right after we see rogue one here because you you you, you, you have to right yeah uh and then we'll go to the no ones um but even eventually i want to show her all of the cartoons and stuff because they're so good Um, yeah so good stuff with that star wars is fun Star Wars is good You've heard it here first. Yep. Star Wars. Fun. How, semicolon, how brave of us. Good. Right. <laughs> so is there any here? <laughs> is there anything else from this pile of Disney Plus news you're intrigued by? Like they've got uh, we've got a bit more on the Tiana show. There's a Baymax show over in the sort of uh, National Geographic and like documentary series corner of Disney Plus, which does have some pretty cool stuff. Uh, coming out this week, I had not heard of this, but Peter Jackson is producing or directing a, a like three part Beatles documentary. That sounds pretty oh. neat. It, it sounds like something I could put on for myself and my parents. And like, that's a genre of entertainment okay. I appreciate. Parent yeah. friendly. They're, yeah. they're not going to know anything about the secret invasion, but this I can get them in on. Um. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would will be like excited for this first look at like Hocus Pocus 2, uh, which is in the works there. Uh, to be honest, there, there's not much. I like the Bayamax cartoon, especially since it's kind of big. Big Hero 6 is kind of a Marvel property. Um, so I will be looking into that. But beyond that, I, I just. I'm sure there'll be a couple things, especially from P- Pixar. Like I know they just released yeah. a a short called Chow something that is oh, a Chow Alberto. Chow I think. Alberto, yeah, which is like a it, it's one of their shorts, but it's a brand new one that is also a like is canonically a sequel to Luca. Nice. Um, it, yeah, so I'm I'm interested in checking that out. I think it's only like six minutes. Um, but yeah, I, I I'm looking forward to all of that. Uh, I'm still trying to convince my parents to get through Loki. They're 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 slacking on on that, and they're what? sitting there like, "Oh, Shang Chi just came out. We're gonna watch that." And I was like, well, well, "I mean, you could, but you should probably." Yeah, no, go it's watch not a Loki problem. First. I. Yeah. I haven't sat down to watch Shang Chi again yet. I really want to because I saw it at the drive-in, and yeah. oh, it's just like not the clearest Christmas picture. I'd like to see it in a formal home theater environment. But also, that's one of the Marvel titles that they released in an IMAX aspect ratio. That oh, there you um, go. I think some of the other recent ones, I think so, they might have. I don't remember the specifications on all of them, but on like half of the Marvel titles, you can see it in an IMAX ratio, uh, which yeah. I will do. So I just want to know more about what that is and how that plays on my TV. There you go. Good stuff. But yeah, that's kind of it for the Disney Plus Day stuff. Um, I, I like that this is they, like they've 
kind of learned very quickly to eventize this and be like, here's all of the stuff that we have. Let's announce it's this. Fun. Let's announce that. Yeah, it really is uh, to just see all of the, the stuff that is coming down the road. So I, I, I know that new rock stars has put like break down yes. up of the like moon Knight thing, the she Hulk thing. I've not even looked at the, those yet. Cause Man, like I'm I, I want to. I probably will, but it is like we only got like 30 seconds each. Like what? And you made right. like a whole 10 minute long video. Like how? How did you do that? <laughs> what is in there? Really? <laughs> mm. so, uh, good stuff with that. Good stuff with that. But Melissa. Yeah, I think that's well. All right. So let's end the podcast with this. I have a question okay. here. Okay. Uh, we're coming up on the end of Oof. the year. Holiday season, Thanksgiving, Black Friday, Christmas down the road, Hanukkah. I think there's some that already happened that I don't know what they are. Um, but yeah, we're closing out the year here. What in, in the time of... Ugh. In the remaining time, is there something that you want to accomplish still, like by the end of the year or work on or do, like, do you have a goal or something like that that you're still being like, man, I still need to watch all the Fast and the Furious movies or are That's you daunting, right? Like or yeah, like I want to learn calligraphy and figure out how to do that or a, a journey where you're never completely accomplish. done. I might keep working on that, but I don't have like a specific end goal in mind. It's not like I'll get to That's a point fine. where it's like, I've done it. I accomplished calligraphy. <laughs> I am a master calligrapher. <laughs> Look at these uh -huh. letters. Look at F. Uh, <laughs> I've been reading a book. I'm like halfway done. I'd like to have the book done before the end of the year. That seems very plausible. I get so stressed go. at the end of every year. Basically like from october through december i'm just like a big stress ball because i hit my birthday and then i hit the end of the year and i'm like what have i accomplished in my life what have i done <laughs> well you picked up calligraphy you started a book you uh i'm sure you've learned some new baking recipes or oh, techniques these, or these aren't these aren't impressive life events <laughs> I, you don't need to have an impressive life event I to to be do like, it. I accomplished this thing. You can be just be like, I got When I go to book. my family parties and when I go to my office and people are like getting engaged and having babies and buying a house and I'm like, I finished a novel. <laughs> then what do that I work like? That works. It does not. It does not you look work. like an average in in an avid reader. Oh, that's not impressive. It doesn't need to be. It can just be the stuff that makes you happy. I want to be impressive. Fulfilled. And I feel like at the end of every year, I'm like, I, I'm, I haven't impressed anybody. <laughs> um, I mean, because all, all the stuff that I want to do is like, I want to finish reading the Jack Kirby Fourth World comics. I want to make sure I finish all of the DC CW shows and also finish up Riverdale before the end of the year. And stuff like that like i just like i just want to like make sure i get stuff done that i've had on my list and that's mm. uh, like i climbed mount everest and kilimanjaro in the same day uh and then i wrote a whole the next great american novel that melissa is halfway th through reading uh <laughs> like that, that's not that stuff it's just like i want to make sure i get done with this TV show so I can cross that off my list and it makes me mm. makes me feel like I accomplished something cross it off aha good stuff there um other things so I've I've also uh parents my parents got me a new Gundam child here I am Working legs? on, uh, yeah, I have the legs. They got you just disembodied right legs, like the dad from uh, Onward. <laughs> no, <laughs> I still have, I still have the whole model kit here. I'm working on it, uh, but I got one. It was last year for my birthday or Christmas or somewhere 
around there. He's sitting right back there. You can see him there. Mm. Uh, this is like the next level of difficulty up. Uh, so there's a lot more pieces. There's like super tiny pieces. There's uh, like more detail on these pieces to make it look like it. Oh, I can see the like metal rivets that where they screwed it all in and stuff like that. Uh, they have like stickers and decals and stuff like that. So I would like to finish this guy and then maybe buy myself a set of actual like model making tools and stuff like that. No. I'm starting to get like it's starting to be where you need them to be like, OK, to get this piece out, you need to use these like tweezers to do this thing and that. And, like, yeah. you need to get the actual stuff, whereas like that first one is like you can just snap them all out and snap it in and it's good and you'll be done in like 30 minutes. And this took me like two hours to just get the like legs here. I put on Aquaman and I watched that for the first time while I did this. Um, it was good. It was fun. I also still I also still need to get to Aquaman. I think you'll really enjoy it. Ma, ma, it ma, seems ma, Melissa. seems it's, pretty. Nicole yeah. Kidman's in it. It's, um, it's not their best. It's not the greatest. Uh, but yeah, there's there's a lot of interesting effects and the way things look and all that stuff. And I think you'll have a good time. But I think if we are comparing it to the Marvel stuff, I would maybe put this on the same level as Thor one, if that makes sense. Like, OK, like it, it it's not their b best, but it's solid and it does what it needs to do to introduce you to these characters, if that makes sense. OK. I, I think I would say this is better than Thor one, but it's still to like in terms of what the movie is doing of just like introducing you to like this whole stuff. But yeah, it's like right on par there with Thor one. So I think you'll enjoy it whenever you get around okay. to it. Good stuff. There you go. I think that's a podcast. It is one unit of podcast complete. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, well, I guess we will wrap things up there. So, Melissa, where can the people find you on the Internet? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. And listen to my other podcast, Saturday Morning Obscurities, the show where me and my brother Jams talk about weird old kids shows you feel like only you remember. And our latest episode is on Sonic Underground. There you go. Good stuff. If you guys want to follow me, I'm at Yo Kyle Springer on Twitter. And if you guys want to stay up to date with all of the stuff that we do here at The Whatnots, we are at The Whatnots on Twitter. So go like, share, subscribe, uh, no matter what you may or may not have accomplished or uh, if the trees are killing you or not. Uh, <laughs> um, it would help us out a ton if you guys could go spread the word. Uh, we would appreciate it a lot. Uh, but yeah, I think that is about it for number 169. Uh, we should be back next week. Next week is the yes. like Thanksgiving stuff. Uh, Melissa and I will both just be here and in yeah. town. So I'm, I'm sure we will record. Uh, but we're also kind of playing it by air just in case so uh but yeah hope you guys have a good thanksgiving and we will see you all next time bye bye